In this video we're going to look at how to test a uh, or compare a sample mean to a population mean. Um, there's going to be three methods uh, that we're going to look at to do this and in these examples the population standard deviation is assumed to be known and again remember um, this is not necessarily a realistic that you would know the population standard deviation. So typically you only know the sample standard deviation, but again we're kind of learning the theory behind this and then we'll get to more realistic examples where we would use T instead of Z to do the test. So the requirements in order to do this, and you should check this for every problem that you do, you need to have a simple random sample, and I'll abbreviate that SRS. Um, the population standard deviation needs to be known and check your sample size. If it's greater than 30, you're okay. If it's not greater than 30, it should say something about a normal distribution somewhere in the problem. Um, so again, make sure you check those for each problem. Uh, then the three methods, um, all of these will lead to the same conclusion. In my example, I'll show you um, each way to solve it, and then you can see that they all result in the same conclusion. Um, and typically, We'll be using the p-value method um, unless a problem asks you otherwise. But the p-value method is the most common. So our example, we have um, a car manufacturers claim a mean of 25 miles per gallon. So the claim uh, is going to be the population mean. Um, you select a random sample of 42 mid-sized cars, which would be N, and record the gas mileage for each. A sample mean, which is X bar, is 23.8. The population standard deviation is 6.54, that's sigma. And keyword in the question is, is your sample mean significantly different from the claimed mean? So let's check the requirements first. It has to be a simple random sample. Okay. It says random sample in the problem. It doesn't say simple random sample, but let's assume that it is. Second one, we need to know the population standard deviation, and we do. And the third one, first check to see if the sample size is greater than 30, and it is. And remember, if it wasn't, then check to see if the population distribution is assumed to be normal. So summarizing the data, Again, just taking it from a word problem into just uh, statistical notation makes it easier to find the numbers we need to plug into a problem. Um, I'm looking for alpha. It doesn't say it anywhere in the problem, um, but let's just use 0 0.05. We'll assume. If it's not listed in the problem, that's a pretty common one that we can use. So hypotheses. The null hypothesis will be that the population mean equals the claimed value, which was 25. And the alternative hypothesis. Uh, remember the symbol stays the same and the number stays the same. The only thing that we're going to change is the sign, and it says different in the problem, so I'm going to use not equal to. So now we come to our three methods. The first one I'll show you is the most common one, the p-value method. And we'll do it by hand first, and then we can look at how to use the calculator to do the same thing. So our sample mean Sample mean is 23.8 Population mean claim is 25, population standard deviation 6.54, and sample size is 42. And you calculate all that out, we get negative 1.19. Um, what we would have to do then is find a p-value for that. And this is where it gets tricky, and it's why 
using your calculator might be a better idea. So for a z-scale, the mean is 0. The z-score we calculated is negative 1.19. So our p-value will include this area, but our uh, hypothesis was two-tailed. It's a not equal to, so we also have to include everything to the right of the positive version, 1.19, over here. So both of these areas together is our p-value. Okay. So you could use your calculator and find one of these two areas. You could use the normal CDF function. It'll do the negative one, so Remember the mean and zero and the standard deviation is one for the z scale. And if you do that, you get 0 0.1170. So that's this area over here on the left. We know that the area on the left and the area on the right are equal to each other. So we can multiply that by two. And that would give us 0 0.2340. So if we use alpha is 0 0.05 and our p-value is 0 0.2340, our p-value is greater than alpha, and our conclusion should be to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis was that the, the claimed value 25 miles per gallon is the, the population mean. So we would, don't have enough evidence to reject that. We have to say that the um, the population mean value of 25 miles per gallon is a valid claim. Um, our sample that we took is not significantly different from the claimed value. So there's our conclusion. Again, this is the most common method, is to calculate z and a p-value, compare the p-value to alpha, and make a conclusion. Um, so let's take a look at how to do this on the calculator. Okay. This is a z-test. The statistics, the sample mean and standard deviation, all that are given to us in the problem, so we're going to leave it on stats. What you put in here is the hypothesized value of the mean, or the claimed value, which would be 25. The population standard deviation is 6.54. The sample mean is 23.8. Sample size is 42. Check your sign and your alternative hypothesis. Are Problem said different, so we're using not equal to, and we go down to calculate and hit enter. So there's this te test statistic z equals negative 1.19, that's exactly what we got. Uh, the p value, 2.2344, if you rounded it, is not very different from ours. Again, your calculator will be more accurate because it's leaving more numbers on the z score when it calculates the p value. But again, it gets the same result as with your calculator as you do doing it by hand um, with the equation. A second method that we can use is the critical value method. In a critical value method we need a critical value of z, and it's going to be alpha over 2 because it's a two-tailed test. Our alternative hypothesis was not equal to. And we're going to compare that to a z that we calculated, and we just did that on the last page, and we got negative 1.19. So all we need uh, left to do this is the um, critical value, and if alpha is 0 0.05, the two-tailed 
alpha over 2 would be 0 0.025. And if you were to look that up on the table of z's in your notes, um, you'd get 1.96. So again, this negative, we want to kind of get rid of that. We just want to look at the value, the absolute value, um, not the sign. So we're comparing 1.96 to 1.19. The test z is less than the critical value of z, which means it's not as extreme, it's not as far away from the mean, so we fail to reject null hypothesis. And we just wrote the conclusion uh, in words in the context of the problem, uh, that context and wording should be the same here. Okay, so again, make sure you put So no matter how you solve a problem, make sure you write out the conclusion in the context of the problem. I'm just not going to write the same sentence over and over. Okay. So the last uh, method is the confidence interval method. In a previous video, you saw how to um, do this with the equation. So first you solve for E and then you put that into this equation. But let's just quick review how to do it on the calculator. So going over to tests, this is a z interval. Remember z because we know the population standard deviation. So we're using stats that are provided in the problem. The population standard deviation is 6.54. The sample mean is 23.8. The sample size is 42. Uh, we want a 95% confidence interval. Remember alpha was 0 0.05 and alpha and the confidence level have to add up to 1. So we're going to use 0.95 for the confidence level. And we calculate. And we get 21.822 to 25.778. The way that you um, interpret a confidence interval in testing is you look to see if it includes the population mean claim from the null hypothesis. So the population claimed value is 25, which is in that confidence interval. So 25 is between these two numbers. And when the claimed value is within the range of your values, then you fail to reject null hypothesis. And again, you could write out that uh, conclusion within the context of the problem, um, but I'm not going to do that again here. So same three ways to solve the problem. The, the, conclusion, the conclusion to fail to reject the null hypothesis is the same for all three, and then the sentence or two that you write in the context of the problem would be the same as well.